proceed now to the second stage of anaerobic respiration, which is fermentation. Hmm, fermentation sounds very familiar to me. Is it the same process used to produce ethyl alcohol in wines and beverages? And is it the same process used when yeast produces carbon dioxide to make bread rise? Yes, very good, students. This time, we'll proceed with the second stage of aerobic respiration, the pyruvic acid breakdown. As you will see later, respiration involving oxygen produces much more energy than anaerobic respiration. Also, these succeeding steps take place inside the mitochondria of the cell. When you force your muscles to exert energy so fast that your respiratory system cannot provide enough oxygen, there will be a buildup of NADH and FADH2 in your muscle cells. When these molecules are not used in the electron transport chain, the Krebs cycle will stop. Now we're at the end of aerobic respiration, which is the electron transport chain. So from the 10 NADH molecules and the 2 FADH2 molecules from the previous stages, 32 ATPs are formed. That's right. If we add this to the previously formed 4 ATPs, we will have a grand total of 36 ATPs for the whole aerobic cycle. 36 ATPs from aerobic respiration and 2 ATPs from anaerobic respiration? Now that's a big difference. I'm glad that I was born an aerobic organism. Of course. What else do you want to be? A yeast? 